Barbara from UNC will come. It really is my pleasure to be here and to be with you tonight uh, to help you get started on this path of finding the right college. Let me start by just asking, I'll ask parents. Parents, how many of you have had older siblings, not including the junior that you're here with tonight, but other older children who have gone through this college selection process? They are, I think our job's done. If we just get the parents to come up here, you know what this is all about. Sort of. Sort of. The thing I can tell you is that it's going to be different this time around. It's different with every child because every child is different. They have different interests and they may take you down a different path. For those of you who haven't been through this process, I'll let you in on the secret that those who have been through it know. It's going to be a very exciting year and a half, and it's going to be a very nerve-wracking year and a half. Um, our job tonight, and what we want to do, is try to make this a little bit easier for you. So we're going to talk about different elements of this college selection process. Zaire's going to talk about finding the right fit, how to look for colleges, um, that type of thing. So I'm going to focus my comments a little bit more on what students can be doing and what you as a family can be doing now as juniors to prepare for this college search. My comments are going to be directed more toward the more selective colleges and I'm not doing that because I think that they're necessarily better for students. I think again each student's different um, but Many students in this area are looking at highly selective institutions in state or out of state. And typically, if you're sort of prepared for that type of college search, then you're really prepared for all options, wherever you want to go, whatever those options are. So please, just because I'm talking about admissions from a more selective point of view, don't interpret that as my saying, the more selective, the better the school, because I do not believe that. I believe there are different types of schools for different types of students, and what you're going to hear about is finding the fit, and that's going to be really the key for you. Um, students, for those of you in the room, to get started, you have one of the hardest jobs. You have to initiate the thought process about college, and you have to ask yourself, why? Why am I going to college? Why am I thinking about going to college? And I have to tell you that if your answer is, oh, well, duh, what's she talking about? Everybody goes to college? That's not a good answer. That is not a good answer, and that won't help you in your college search. So you really need to start to think about those things that will help you determine what's best for you after high school. Is it a gap year? Maybe taking a year off before you start college? Is it going right to college? And parents don't panic. Gap year doesn't mean they're going to sit at home on your sofa and watch TV and eat everything you have in the kitchen for a year. Hopefully a gap year means they're going to get out of the community, get out in the community, get out in the world. Maybe they're going to go to South Africa and do community service. Or maybe they're going to go to Western North Carolina and do community service. Or maybe they're going to work. So there are all types of opportunities. Having said that, let's go back to the assumption, it's a bad thing to do, but let's go back to the assumption that students, your students, you're here tonight, you're thinking about college, so what do you need to do? What are things students and families you can be doing right now? The first thing I can tell you is just breathe. I promise you now, and I'll promise you at the end, it's going to be okay. It'll be nerve-wracking, it'll be a little bit of a roller coaster ride, but just always remind yourself there are thousands of students and families that have gotten through this process ahead of you, and if they've done it, you can do it too. Students, the best thing you can be doing right now is thinking about your classroom work, doing the best work that you can do in the classroom. Now, some folks think that it really is the junior year and all the college decisions rest on the junior year. 
I would say it's not just the junior year that colleges are really starting to look at your academic records from ninth grade on, but certainly the more recent work is extremely important in the college selection process. So students, you really want to be working hard and doing the best you can in the classroom. You want to be taking courses that are challenging to you. You want to take some rigorous courses within reason. And that within reason is really, really important. Within reason does not mean taking five AP courses as a junior, five as a senior, doing lots of different activities on top of that, and if you're lucky, getting two or three hours of sleep a night. That's not within reason. That's not in your best benefit. Um, that's not necessarily what colleges are looking for. Do colleges want to see students who are willing to take an academic challenge? Absolutely, because that's what we want in our classrooms. We want students sitting in our classrooms who are going to challenge their professors, who are going to challenge their classmates, who are really going to engage in the conversation and the dialogue that happens in the classroom. But you don't have to necessarily take five AP courses each year for that to happen. So take some challenges, but also take some courses that you're just interested in. Something that really is in line with your academic passion. If your passion, and let me just put a little caveat here, if you're the type of student who you, what you really thrive on is taking the most challenging courses you can take, it is going to take, you know, you're sitting there going, I don't care what she's saying, I'm taking five APs because I really, really want to. Not because my mom and dad are telling me I should, not because I'm afraid some college admissions officer somewhere is going to look down on me if I don't, but I really, I would fight for the opportunity to take those types of courses. If that's what drives you, go for it, do it. My guess is that there are fewer students who are driven by that and more students who have your academic interests, your academic passions, you want to take some of those challenging AP courses in some areas, but not necessarily in all areas. That's okay. Do that and then fill in the rest of your schedule with some elective courses and things that will really allow you to explore your academic interest. Continue that line of thought again through your senior year. When it comes to standardized testing, please, please, please do not, do not take the SAT and ACT 10 times. Please don't. I've actually seen students who've sent in that many copies of various score reports. SATs, ACT, which is now big in North Carolina, are they part of the admissions process? At most colleges they are. You know, there's some schools, particularly schools in state, Wake Forest being one, where they are test optional, meaning you can choose to submit your scores, but you don't have to. But the SAT, it's not what you would believe it to be if you pay attention to the advertising. You know, I went into um, a well-known bookstore that will rename, remain unnamed and actually went through the bookstore looking for the SAT, ACT, the college prep materials. You know how big those shelves are in the bookstores? If you go into a major, they have these big shelves. They had no fewer than 10 shelves with books devoted to college admission. I figured they had fiction, they had nonfiction, they had college admission. That was all they had. Um, there's a lot of hype out there about SAT and ACT. Some folks would probably believe that for a student, your entire future rests on one Saturday morning. You know, whether you ever get into college, whether you ever get a job after college, whether you ever get married, whether you have two kids or four kids, you know, what type of house you live in, what type of car, is all based on that Saturday morning. And we all know that's not true. So take the test seriously, but please don't overdo the test. It's just one of many factors colleges will look at. In terms of your activities, follow your passion. You heard me talk about passion in academics. Follow your passion outside the classroom as well. The length of the list is not what's going to help you in the college admissions process. You don't have to have sort of one activity from column A, one from column B, one from column C. 
I think what most colleges would prefer to see is depth of commitment, depth of engagement. What is the impact? How is your community, maybe by your definition of community, whether it's here at Carborough High School or in the Chapel Hill Carborough area or in the state or in the world, in a religious community, in a business community, you define community and then show us how that community is different because you've been a part of it. It's not being a part of every single community you can identify, but it's really digging into those things that are most interesting to you. Again, because we want to see that on our college campuses. We all want students who are going to be involved, and not every student has to be involved in the same thing. In fact, our college campuses are better, better college campuses, better communities when we bring people in with different interests, different backgrounds, and they come together and they can learn and share with each other. So wherever your passion takes you, follow that. And don't worry about there being some mystical checklist that you must do this, this, and this for college admissions. In the spring of this year, you'll want to begin to talk to your teachers about recommendations for next year. And don't, don't fall into the trap of, I can only ask teachers in whose courses I have an A for a recommendation. Sometimes some of the best recommendations come from teachers in a class where you may have struggled, but you really tried really hard. And teachers will write recommendations and they'll say up front, this student does not have the highest grade in my class, but I would take a classroom full of students just like this every single day if I could get them. And then they'll go on to explain why, and usually they're talking about your motivation, again, how engaged you are, that you're willing to really put in the work and the effort. That matters. That matters to colleges. So think about those teachers you've connected with and start to talk to them in the spring and see if they are willing to write those required teacher recommendations for you. Um, other things to do this year, continue to do your research. You'll hear more about that, so I'm not going to go into that, but that'll be important. And as you do your research, it'll be important for you to start to understand college admissions lingo. Early decision, early action, rolling admission. There's the FAFSA, there's the SAT, there's the ACT. There's a whole long list of acronyms and terminology that college admissions folks use. For instance, early decision. What's the difference in early decision and early action? Early decision means you apply early to a college and you hear early. Early action means you can apply earlier to a college and you may hear earlier in the spring. But here's the difference. Early decision means that if that college decides to offer you admission, you are obligated to attend that particular institution. You can't look around. You can't, as they say, shop for scholarship dollars. You can't compare financial aid packages. You can't wait and see what special opportunities other schools might present to you. So students, here's what I say about early decision. You have to really, really, really want to go to that particular school to apply under a binding early decision. And here's sort of the analogy for me. You get into that school, you're excited. Another school comes along and says, you know what, we're going to pay full ride. Your family won't have to pay a penny for four years or five for you to come to our institution. You're going to want your first choice college so badly that you're going to say, thank you, no thank you. I'm going to go to X college. Um, that was my first choice and I appreciate the dollar offer, but I'm not going to take it. So that college comes back and says, okay, well, we'll give you everything that we said, pay for those years, and we'll send you on a cruise every spring break. <laughs> so now you've got four years paid for and spring break covered. Cruise anywhere you want to go. You're still going to say, thank you, but no thank you. I want to go to this other school. So they come back at you one more time and they say, all right, four years, five years, full pay, cruises on spring break, and 
Porsche, Jaguar, whatever it is you want, we're going to give you that car. And you're still going to say, thank you, but no thank you. You know, you have to want that one early decision college that much to apply early decision. The other schools where you can apply early action, you'll hear early, but you don't have that binding obligation. So you can consider all of your offers, and put everything on the table, and then make your decision. And then there's rolling admission, which means you send in an application to a college, and anywhere from a few days to a few weeks later, you will hear from that college whether or not you're going to get in. And then it gets more complicated because some schools have early decision one and early decision two and early decision three, and some are binding and some are not. Then they have early action, which goes under early decision, and then regular, and then later in the year they roll. We do our best to confuse you, and personally, I think we do a pretty good job. We stay up at night, we call each other, admissions officer to admissions officer, and say, what can we do to confuse them now? And so we come up with all these different plans. The plans are out there. It'd be nice if it was much simpler, um, but they are what they are right now. So as you do your research, remember, <coughs> Remember to ask about these things. Maybe keep a little notebook with all the various deadlines so you can keep track of these things. <laughs> Students, narrow your list of colleges before you apply. Colleges are not exactly inexpensive to apply to. You can get fee waivers and your counseling staff here can talk to you about those application fee waivers if your family needs that. But there really is no need to apply to 20 colleges. And we see students every year who will apply anywhere to 20 to 25, 26 colleges. And what they're doing is they're collecting, they hope, acceptance letters to all these schools. And what they're doing in reality, if they are getting those acceptance letters, is they're keeping other students from having that same opportunity to go to X or Y college because they're taking acceptance letters, they're holding a place in the class until very late in the year when they know they don't intend to enroll there. So do your research on the front end, narrow your colleges down, don't apply to 20. You really, too much hassle for you, too much hassle for everybody. So don't do that. Um, just a couple pieces of advice and then I'm going to sit down, be quiet for a little while. Parents, this is for you. This is your child's process. You need to be involved, but it really is the child who needs to take ownership. Look at it this way. They're the driver in the car, and even though their driving might make you nervous, they're the driver and you're the passenger. So you need to let them lead the way, direct, steer where you're going, but yet you're there with them. Students, if you want to drive the car, you have to get your license. You have to take responsibility for that car. So if you want your parents to sit in that passenger seat and let you make the decisions on where you want to apply, where you want to go, what you're looking for, you have to step up and take the responsibilities of that. Parents, try to avoid the pitfall of the rumor mill. And there are a lot of rumors out there. I've been in the admissions business at UNC for over 30 years, and we've heard a lot. One of my favorites was, from a family in Chapel Hill several years ago, and the mother of a student called to say, I'd like to know which street is out of state. And I said, excuse me? And she said, well, I've heard, and she really truly believed that because there's so many students from Chapel Hill who are interested in coming to UNC, that to help reduce the competition that we picked one street each year mm -hmm. and we just decided that any student who lived on that street would be considered <laughs> out of state for admission. So they'd be in a different pool than everybody from Chapel Hill. <laughs> and I said, really, that's not true. She said, well, you know, we were talking to realtors because we were going to move. We just <laughs> want to make sure our street's okay. Um, and she really, really believed it. So think about these things as you hear them. And if there's any little nagging doubt in the back of your mind that that sounds a little far-fetched, check it out with the college. Students, for you, don't try to game the system. It takes way too much energy. Be who you are, do what you do, 
and let the system, let it play out for you. But don't try to game, don't try to, oh, GPA, you know, I'm not going to take this course because I'm going to lose a quarter of a point here when I really want to take that course, but I'm going to take this course. And don't do that. Just be yourselves, go after what you're interested in, and it will be okay. Students, one last piece of advice, <coughs> excuse me, for you. Don't be afraid to be different. Okay. You don't have to go to the schools that are listed in U.S. News and World Report. You can, if you want to, if they're the right school for you, but you don't have to. You don't have to apply to the same colleges that your best friends are applying to. Be yourself and allow yourself to be different and to pursue your own interests and your own passions. There are well over 4,000 colleges in this country. There's more than one right college for every single student. There are multiple colleges where any one of you could go and be happy. So open yourself up to those possibilities. Last piece of advice, where did I start? Breathe. You're going to be OK. You're going to get through the process. And it's all going to work out for you. So those are my comments on preparation. One other thing we were asked to do, and as Zaire's coming up, I'll just mention these real quickly. Mrs. Wooten asked us to think about questions that you should think about asking in your research. So here um, are three ideas or questions I would give to you. Go up to currently enrolled st students when you're visiting schools and ask them what they really love about that particular school. Ask them, this is my second, if you could change one thing about this school, what would you change? And then the other just piece of advice is, if you go to a particular school and you have to declare a major going in, find out how easy it is to change your major if you change your mind, because a lot of students in college change their minds on what they want to do. So just find that out. And with that, I'm going to sit down and turn it over to Mrs. Wooten or Desire, one or the other. <laughs>